Great. How does I-I-E-T work? Let me show you. Uh, let's imagine that I have written an, a, a number seven essay, and it was a once now essay, and let's just imagine once I was in high school, and now I am in college. And I am talking about in this essay how bored I was in high school and how stupid I thought all the assignments were and how they handed out like dumb worksheets. I was miserable in high school. I don't know about you, but I was. And, but they told me what to do and I had to hand stuff in all the time, blah, 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 blah. In college, <sighs> um, well, lots of things happened to me in college, but... But one of the things that was the most exciting and the most challenging was um, I had to choose my own stuff. I mean, I had to, I had to choose my own, I had to choose my own major. I had to choose my own essay topics. I had a lot more personal responsibility about what I was going to think about. No one told me what I had to think about, like they did back in the day. Um, the ability to focus on what I want to focus on. The freedom to focus on what I want to focus on. I can't tell you how much I hated trigonometry and geometry. I just did. I hated it. I'm not a math person. And it was great. In college, I had to take one math class, and then I never had to take math ever again. I don't still don't know why I had to take that one math class. But that was awesome. I was free from... Uh, quadratic equations for the rest of my life. To this day, I don't really understand why I need to know quadratic equations. Anyways. So, oh, oh, by the way, I have to tell you, um, it wasn't Piaget's hierarchy of needs. It's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Piaget was really important in psychology, but another guy. The hierarchy of needs is Maslow. So, uh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Eek, ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know everything all the time, just exactly right. But, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is what I was talking about. M-A-S-L-L-W. If you haven't learned about him yet, look him up. It's really cool. All right. So I'm imagining Captain Kirk's uh, fantasy essay. It's in number seven. Once I was in high school, and now I am in college. And I wrote that all. I wrote uh, a once part. I wrote a lot about a college part. And then in my ending, I said in my essay number seven, you know, it's it's... It's about a lot of stuff, but thinking. I think differently. I was asked to think in other levels through college, and that's the biggest difference. What counts as thinking in my fantasy essay? Now, <laughs> outside source, outside source, outside source. Uh, who have we read? Brett Staples, Black Men in Public Space. That's about racism. Nope. That's about humming and racism. Nope. Uh, J. Bacon Kincaid, girl. Da, 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 da. Nope. That's about mean moms. Um, what else have you read? Um, what about, there's a bunch of school stuff in that Malcolm Gladwell article, uh, going to school, but I uh, smart, but that's not really about college. That's about family helping me get where I am. Uh, coming of age in the laundromat. That's about stepping up and taking responsibility. That's not going to help me. Um, Brett Anthony Johnston, skateboarding. That's about a guy being clueless and really cocky and not really respecting his dad as much as he might have. But, you know, he's first generation. He wasn't, dad, dad didn't go to college. Anthony Johnston did. Uh, oh, Malcolm, what about, what about college? You know, what you do in college? Ooh, 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 ooh. Edmondson, Edmondson. Why are you here? College. But Edmondson talks about what college is for. Woohoo! And I bet if I look back at that, there's a bunch of stuff I could use. Um, uh, the kind of where he talks about college. Um, he talks about influences. He talks about, I have to go reread it because I don't have it in my head. And there's another one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's another really good one who talks about thinking, and it's David Foster Wallace, This Is Water. That essay, that one, um, you know, he's, there's this great bit where he's standing in, um, standing in the, the grocery line, and he's kind of pissed off because it's taking too long, and he can sit there being paced, pissed off because he has to wait so long in the grocery line, or, he says, he can choose to think about other stuff. 
and that awareness and that freedom and that sense of choice that after college we learn we can choose where we put our attention. We're not, we don't have to be victims of our first thought or victims of the crap that we happen to have to deal with. We can choose where to put our heads. That's one of the payoffs for all the work of college education, all the work that you're doing. You're training your minds to be more forceful, more free, more focused, big payoffs. I like Foster Wallace and I really like that idea. I love that example, standing in the grocery store, getting ready to be pissed off because this idiot in front of me is taking long, but choosing to put my attention someplace else. Hmm. By the way, college isn't the only place that teaches us that, but it's one of the places. It's one of the places. Uh, all right, so I'm going to decide. I found it. I, I, I have an essay. I have an argument. And I have just, with you guys, quickly, 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 chosen a text that I'm going to use. So now I have to magically go back, reread the text, and find the quotation that I want to use. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm going to kind of bluff. But let's make believe I found a quote. Uh, let's make believe this is the quote. The quote is, uh, after college, we have the freedom, we have freedom and power over our attention. All right. After college, we have freedom and power over our attention. That is David Foster Wallace's quote. That's the quote I'm going to steal from that article. It's not really there, but if I looked, I could find a better one. After college, we have the freedom. So this is the including part. So we're working on incorporating outside sources into a, an essay. And to do so, we're going to build a paragraph that we can put into um, our essay in its new form, in its revised new draft form. So I've included it. Now, MLA says that I end the quotation. I open a parenthesis on the same line if I have space, but I don't. Uh, and the last name of this author is Foster Wallace. He has two last names. Go figure. And the page number in the article that I found that quote, let's make believe, is 11. So then I put an end parentheses and I end the period. So that's how I incorporate an outside source quotation using MLA graphics. I open a quotation mark, I end the quotation mark, parentheses, last name, page number, close parentheses, period. I hold off of that period till after all that stuff. And this is called uh, MLA, Modern Language Association, in-text parenthetical citation. Woohoo! A lot of fancy words for last name, page number, last name, page number. So, when I'm reading through the essay, I'm your reader, I see that you quote, I know right away who wrote that quote. And I'm going to learn more about that in, in the work cited, which we'll talk about in a second. All right, so I include the quotation. Well, now I need to explain it. And I'm going to use my own words to explain this quotation, to say why I think its idea is important, why I think that idea, what the idea is, but in my own words. Um, I might say, for Foster Wallace, or for Wallace, college has a payoff. It's not just about, it's not just about jobs. Period. It's about, what should we say? It's about thinking. It's about, or it's about, um, it's about daily life. It's about thinking day to day. There I go.
Now, you can notice, maybe not as well as I'd like you to, for Wallace, college has a payoff. It's not just about jobs. It's about thinking day to day. I'm using Kirk Talk, or you're going to use your own voice to talk about these ideas in two or three sentences, making them more clear, pointing out to readers the how come you think, what you think those thoughts are, or what you think the important part of those thoughts are, using your language, not using the language of the quotation. So, I included it, I've explained it. Now, I want to just, to tie it in, I want to I wanna make sure in a sentence or two that it's very clear for the readers why this idea is important. And I may, whatever my ending is, whatever my, my ending of my essay is, my main art, once I was in high school, now I'm in college, and college has taught me, you know, college is about thinking, it's not just about tests. College is about deep stuff. <laughs> College is about living life better. It's not just about my earning power. <sighs> okay, that's what I really want to say. Kyle, going to college is about quality of your life. It's not just about earning power. That's, that's my conclusion up there. How does this tie to that? It's not just about earning. So I want to write a sentence that reminds readers why I care this. After college, for Wallace, college payoff is not just about jobs. It's about thinking day to day. Um, college, how we think, is, is part of our quality of life. And again, this is hard for you to see, it's hard for me to see, but let's make believe quality of life is one of the really key terms that I've come up with in my previous essay number seven. So I'm going to take that key idea from my essay number seven's ending, and I'm going to make sure that I use this sentence to remind readers of what my essay's main point is. That's what I mean by tie-in. It's not enough just to say, oh, here's the cool quote, and here's what the quote means. I need that last sentence to tie this thinking into the larger issue of my essay. And one of the really uh, easiest and clearest ways to do that is by reminding the readers of your key term, of your own essay's key term or key concept. All right, so I have include, explain, and tie. And so the last thing I need to do is I need to just write a little sentence or two to introduce the quote. And I do that last uh, uh, in a uh, commencement address. The fiction writer D.F. David Foster Wallace talks about what college really does. I'm going to read that introductory sentence again. In a commencement address from 2010, I might even say, the fiction writer David Foster Wallace talks about what college really does. Now notice that in that sentence introducing my quotation, I've helped readers understand why this is irrelevant, uh, why this is irrelevant, I'm going to turn this a little bit, why this is a relevant um, uh, text to quote. I name the author, I say where the article comes from so that I have some identity of what, some idea of what this source is. Is it a book? Is it an article? Is it a speech? And maybe the time it's from and a, just a sentence or two uh, giving a some context. So why this source? Where the hell did it come from? And why might this essay be using it? Uh, so that's uh, in a commencement address, I've identified the genre of my source. Da fiction writer David, Fa I've identified the author and who he is. Is your author a researcher, a politi political figure, um, a college professor? We want to know who is this guy. 
uh, and talks about what college really means. That's just a bumper sticker overview of what this source is doing is about. I did it in one sentence. Sometimes it takes two or three, but the important part I want you guys to realize is that when we're using a quote, we introduce the quote, we include the quote, we explain it and tie. So what that is, is we've just built a really generous paragraph. And that is a paragraph that in your essay number eight, your revision of some previous essay, you're going to decide where you're going to put this paragraph. Maybe you stick it in right at the end, right before your ending of your essay. Um, that's a really good place to, you've made a whole big case about this. Now you're going to incorporate an outside source to tie your essay to a larger conversation. And then you can conclude. It's your conclusion, uh, but you've used this quotation to back you up. You've used this outside source to say, yeah, me too. There's other people who think this way. That's cool. And we're all part of this big conversation. We're even more persuasive. We're part of a much bigger, it's not just me and my little life. It's me and my little life and David Foster Wallace too. There's two of us. And that adds force. It adds credibility. It adds gravitas or seriousness. It adds maturity. It adds import and it adds value to your ideas. We incorporate outside sources to add value and power and authority to our own ideas. We're claiming the authority and the strong power of David Foster Wallace's knowledge as relevant and supportive of my knowledge. We incorporate outside sources about, it's, it's a way of increasing our power. And by the way, that's not a bad way of thinking about why any of us is in college anyways. You're here to increase your power and punch away. So uh, what I want you to do for your essay number eight is uh, you will have chosen a source, you will have found a quotation, and you have built a paragraph incorporating that quotation. That's the minimum requirement. If you really like this source, and if there's another quotation that you really like, okay, you can, you can do two quotes. You could even do as many as three quotes, but you must do one, and it must be built into a paragraph I-I-E-T, and you get to decide in your essay number eight, your essay that's incorporating an outside source, you get to decide where it best fits uh, to do that. And now I just have one last thing to do, and I'm going to do it in the next video. It's how to do a works cited, and I'll be really quick in the next video.